deal to really report. Uh, the one star that we have right here is silver. It is starting to move. I want to see it get above this 26 range. Uh, once it does that, then it'll be free to make its next move upwards. And ultimately, I'm looking for the mid-30 range uh, up here at the very least. And you know my feelings on that. You know what I've said before under 23 and a dollar cost average. It went all the way down to just under 22 and then made its move back up here. And we'll see if it makes, uh, it breaks these highs here, which are more likely to occur uh, going into the winter time. So that's what we're looking for. Um, now going back to Bitcoin, nothing has changed. Uh, I, I'm adding the time boxes of which things are likely to occur in so you guys can get a bigger picture type of view. Um, this is your positive box. We entered that just uh, in September uh, here. And so now we have higher likelihood of upward price movement. And this is where the statistics come into play. So we have the likelihood of going higher within this range. Doesn't mean we won't break back down and then back up. Uh, that is still possible, but you know, um, you know, like I said, higher prices are more likely within this time frame for the next several months. And uh, we'll see if that occurs. It would be nice if it just went straight down here and uh, at any time, honestly, once it goes under that 8,000 would be great because then the statistics longer, longer term um, go to breaking the all-time highs and, and above. But this is the most likely short-term, uh, you know, mid-term, let's call it, uh, likelihood of occurring up, back down. And then when we break out of here, going into the middle of next year, um, you know, then the statistics change again, and I'll update that from that point. But this is what it looks like within this period of time up and back down, and then I'll update you guys uh, forecasting wise what's likely to occur from there. But first, we have to see what structures are created. We can't just go over and um, get that close to the edge of theoretical predictions where you start going off and so forth because then it gets very blurry I guess you can say um, some other ones uh, I had a few people message me they are now long-term believers in uh, Beyond Meats which I think is good uh, they're gonna be very popular and we've seen the movement of that um, they've continued to go up and I've been talking about them for a while and technically, this was the last pattern that was a, a long point, and it went all the way back above here, which was great. And then we created this, and now it's just fundamentals. It, you know, they're appearing more and more in stores like Walmart and, and Publix and different places. So they have more distribution, and they're just growing, uh, simply put. And people are actually eating them. Um, it's a healthy uh, alternative and it's also good for the environment so there you go plus they made great strides in making it taste more like meat uh, you know when they serve it at Burger King I mean what does that say it tells you right there but anyway we've made a big move uh, from that uh, 160s 170s and now we're all the way up to almost 200 and uh, it's looking like it's going to be eyeing the highs all the way back here, and we'll go from there. Um, Tesla, nothing, nothing to really say. I'm short, and uh, if it gets back up to 500 or above, I'll add more. Um, it's kind of undecided of what it's doing here. I'd like to see it spike up. I know, but you're like, well, why would you want to see it go up? You're short, and well, I want to add more. Um, that's the main thing. It's, this is more of a hedge trade for me longer term. It is so overvalued. It's silly, but um, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, and we'll see if that happens. AMD, kind of a yawner. It's just meandering around here. It did create 
go up to here and then pulled back. It's a little concerning, but not really. Uh, fundamentals, again, this is another one that's just the fundamentals. They recently um, had that buyout of, uh, what was that, uh, the Asian company. Well, anyway, um, a chip manufacturer, and uh, uh, that's a positive for them longer term. But uh, they're just going to be growing and growing because they're, they've got the competitive advantage over Intel. And gamers are using them, which uh, gamers overpay, and they pay for the performance, uh, which is high margin. Uh, so things look very good for them. And uh, what else did I go on about silver? Yes, I did. And um, that's pretty much it. I'm looking for, you know, back up to here. I already said that, so let's not be redundant. Um, don't see any other opportunities in the crypto market right now. I'm just holding on to my SNXT. The whole DeFi space kind of got hit yes, um, last week. And uh, we'll see where we go from here. We could get another drop that goes drop down, meanders down here, goes sideways, and then spikes up towards uh, uh, the, the rest of the year. But we'll see. Uh, don't want to predict this space is very, you know, um, we'll see. <laughs> That's all I can say on that one. Um, what else do we have out here? I don't see any pairs that I'm really interested in. Uh, so we'll just wait for Bitcoin to see what it does. Uh, if it can go over and break, you know, above here and get and make a solid move upwards, that would be great. Uh, timeline wise, it's kind of blah until you hit October 31st which is in the next few weeks you don't really get anything of uh, explosion possibilities statistically but you know that's up to the charts I, I, I don't you know I can't say I, I could say that and then all of a sudden we can go straight up and so forth the bigger statistics are what I'm more interested in and they they point upwards uh, within this given period of time and then back downwards and um, then from there we'll see what it creates and go from there other than that not a great deal to report on but that's it is what it is and I will update you guys next week have a great week